Hi there, and welcome to my presentation at Habashicon Asia 2022. My name is Yi Hao Chen, and I'm a current graduate student at Queen's University of Canada. I'm also a committer at Habashi Skywalking. Today, we are going to cover a unique and emerging topic, that is AI ops. I'll share my take on the background, motivations, and the feasibility of providing out-of-the-box AI ops open source solutions with Apache Skywalking. This talk does not require any background in machine learning as I will cover the basics along the way. I hope by the end of the presentation, you will have a concrete idea of the solid reasons to adopt machine learning into your monitoring platform and how we are approaching it in a step-by-step -step manner. Now, what specifically are we going to talk about today? Let's take a look. First, we're going to talk about the backgrounds of Apache Skywalking, observability, and the definition of AI ops, along with the reasons that we may become interested. On the other hand, I'm going to share some of the misconceptions, uh, yet commonly misunderstood by the practitioners in the DevOps area. I will discuss some of the most practical advantages of using machine learning in a real monitoring solution that will make some people's life much easier. Moving on to the third point, this is where we get to gently introduce the two solid algorithms for metrics and log data, covering two pillars of observability that we plan to support in the first phase. In this section, you will find machine learning not so mysterious anymore. Finally, we will briefly go over our plans to bake AI ops into a skywalking. From there, we will grow with the landscape and look into the future. Now, before jumping into AI ops, I'll first give you some very basic background on the ecosystem that we are from. Apache Skywalking is an open source full stack application performance monitoring platform, also commonly referred to as an APM. The idea is to monitor a complex system from many perspectives so we can prevent or respond to system failures in a rapid manner. Skywalking is especially designed for microservices and containerized infrastructures. It even natively supports many emerging cloud native technologies, including service mesh and function as a service. Now with Apache Skywalking grown into a full blown monitoring platform, we support massive data collection, aggregation, correlation, and analysis beyond the traditional class of observability, which are commonly known as tracing logging metrics. But with the increasing magnitude of data we keep, it starts to pose a heavier burden onto the operational engineers while constantly monitoring the systems. Uh, keeping terabytes of telemetry while requiring humans to analyze them upon a system failure is not always a happy trip. We sometimes wonder, is it even necessary to manually walk through more than dozens of metrics, logs, and traces to identify possibly a false alarm? To, because of the tedious manually set alarm rules, it will be so nice to have some kind of an intelligent uh, assistant that will uh, hint you with the directions, right? So let's take a look at what is AI ops and how it can help. We start from the simplest definition of AI ops. We define it as ingesting big data and uses machine learning to detect anomalies in your observability telemetries. We correlate the context of potential issues by analyzing from multiple dimensions and hinting reliable recourses to the practitioners. To better understand it, please refer to the flow figure on the left side, where we first have telemetry collected and cleaned by the monitoring platform, which in this case, Apache Skywalking. Uh, in a pure menu process during an incident, we expect to have multiple people dividing and analyzing the data by looking through a range of traces, matrix, and logs, and they hope to locate a strategy to mitigate the problem. Then we apply this strategy to action uh, into production environments and fix the problems. Uh, in the end, we may see an improved situation and temperature will be back to normal. With AI ops, we instead utilize machine learning to boost the understanding of data in an automatic way, targeting to replace some of the manual work uh, with intelligence. If you have heard of the term AI ops before, it must be after 2016, uh, when Gartner uh, redefines it and publishes that report. But I'd like to point out that AI ops is nowhere near a new terminology. The academia and industry has been trying to adopt machine learning to solve system stability problems since the very start, before the last decade. And they have been quite successful. 
based on this fact, we have the confidence to implement an open source solution. We haven't really talked too much about why would we want AIOps apart from its definitions. It surely sounds nice, but is it what you really need and what is preventing AIOps from massive adoption by organizations? Materials that can be found on the vendor's websites tend to be quite vague. To summarize the most critical points, I have generalized three certain things that need our attention. The first one is telemetry data is huge. We often hear users ingesting data at scale of billions into skywalking. The second one is that human does not always work with full efficiency. Not to offend anyone, but we as humans are not designed or supposed to look through mountains of data like a machine. It causes frustration and tend to overlook problems. The last but most importantly is that business monitors their systems to prevent downtime and the bosses expect them to quickly recover if they were to went down. They simply cannot wait. Therefore, we now see a potential bottleneck that is human analyzers. Take a look at the figure on the left side. We are responsible to identify the root causes from anomalies, we make decisions, we plan actions, and we finally execute the resolutions. If we can speed up any part of it, it increases the throughput. Since machines work far beyond human speed, we expect it to eliminate some of the tedious processes for us and condense the most valuable information to the engineers. Therefore, we can significantly speed up the decision-making process and essentially reducing the mean time to issue identification and resolution. Now, am I saying that AI op solutions will replace us? That is absolutely wrong. Let's go through the reasons why we are still essential. We cannot kick ourselves out from the process. AI ops in our goal or in any existing marketing solutions are not sentient, and they are not good enough to make the final course. We can only say that human alone is not enough. As an industry vendor once said, we implicitly delegate the extraordinary complex task of actually analyzing the metric, log, and the trace data as an exercise to the reader that we should aim to utilize machine learning to overcome the time-consuming and inefficient initial analysis process. In monitoring scenarios, we often see alerting or alarms as a way to modify sleepy people or potential system issues, but it is almost impossible to manually set thresholds for thousands if not millions of metrics. In many cases, people who are monitoring the system are not even who developed it, which requires a constant update of domain knowledge in order to understand the topology and also critical things to search for during an accident. With monitoring analytics as a process of deriving useful information from sparse data streams, part of the domain knowledge information is lost as they expire. It is simply not easy for us to extract unless there are some stateful models can remember it using algorithms. From here, we would justify why we are developing the solution in the open source world and the pain points to address. First, if you have worked in academia and the industry, you will see a large gap between both. While studying the same problems such as log detection, academia primarily focused on exploring the future. In my experience, many of the deep learning based algorithms are not suitable for the majority of smaller organizations, since there is an inherent difficulty in cost, parameter tuning, and training time. Uh, there's also a difficulty in constructing a holistic AI ops platform. Therefore, we base on integration to existing mature monitoring, monitoring platforms and provide AI ops features as a component. As a result of the true two previous conditions, uh, the smaller organizations generally don't have the luxury and resources to build a DIY solutions. As a top rated monitoring solution, integrating AIOps into Apache Skywalking sounds like a great idea. We address the above problems by combining the intelligence from industry experts and passionate young researchers in the AI field to work out some good implementations of algorithms and also engine pipelines and put them together into an out-of-the-box solution. 
Now, having learned AOPS as a good solution to the previous problems, we should face reality. Despite having a cool name as AIOps, we should not deify this term. It is not using magic, but math and statistics to process data. Not everything could be automated as the current machine learning cannot make decisions without false positives. And we are very sensitive to this problem in this area. So the correct way to approach AIOps is to do it incrementally. That is first, we believe any useful AIOps solutions must include fast and autonomous learning as data is initially ingested from the diverse and large data sources. A useful AIOps solution will also add actual values to operators, such as mean time to identification and mean time to resolution. Also, finally, as a secondary system to a monitoring platform, it should be easy to tune and it doesn't become a maintenance burden itself. Now, let's take a high level look at how AIOps is doing in the open source world before we introduce the steps on how we are going to implement ours. First, as we have mentioned, AIOps is not a new term. Therefore, there's already a lot of algorithms from academic research. We'll see a specific number later. Uh, just to clear, uh, clarify that we are not planning to invent brand new algorithms. However, given the large body of algorithms available, there is only a handful of them are claimed to be effective in production, which almost none is openly discussed. To our best knowledge, open source AI ops tools are also limited. Uh, throughout the recent years, we have seen well-known projects on metrics and log analysis but they tend to provide only the basic algorithm implementations and lacks integration to widely used platforms. We also noticed that their implementations will require some extra machine learning knowledge to adjust before they could be adopted into production. Last and most importantly, out-of-the-box integration is either scarce or non-existent, except for those who are uh, from cloud vendors, which are requiring paid subscriptions. So with all the understanding of the importance of AI ops and the current situation, we at Skywalking provo uh, propose an implementation of AI ops engine that will fill this gap by providing all the necessary components that a developer could spin up an integration within a few minutes without unrealistic uh, requirements for engineering and machine learning knowledge. To be able to actually implement the big task, we have decided to start small. The principle of our action is simple. That is, we provide down to earth and the most practical features first. That includes metrics anomaly detection and log clustering. We focus on incremental learning, which ensures a near real time response from the incoming data while being trained efficiently. So it could handle much more than a toy project. Uh, incremental learning also has a huge advantage of fitting data to the most recent time. So any drift to the data pattern can be learned in a timely manner. As an ecosystem project of Apache Skywalking, we have the advantage of collaborating with the community to provide out of the box integration and visualizations so that when you have the Apache Skywalking deployment and the AI ops uh, engine, you do not need to write your own servers and clients to, to see the predicted results. It will be there in the default Skywalking Booster UI. Moving first to introduce our ways of data ingestion. This part is quite simple, but to emphasize one point, monitoring is a secondary system to the production system. Therefore, as an analytical component, we are the secondary system to a secondary system. So we decided to start from a minimal stream processing engine that only involves an in-memory data store for fast data retention. We ingest from the data source continuously and incrementally from exporter plugins provided by Skywalking backend. We only ingest services where users find the necessary to prevent overcomputation. As we focus more on the AI side, I will not cover too much of the engineering. Now let's move on to discuss our analytical decisions on telemetry data. As we mentioned in our principles, during preliminary research, we found so many algorithms related to AI ops in the academic research field. Take a look at the Google search engine. We can see over 10,000 results in just KPI anomaly detection. 
broadening the search and returns 10 times even more papers in the area. But to our understanding, to be able to make an open source AIOps engine work in the production environment, several characters are critical. Uh, what is practical to be deployed is often considered unsupervised learning, which means the algorithms trained on data is without the knowledge of the incoming data set. Essentially, like metrics or log data, we do not know any part of them not behaving incorrectly before feeding them into the machine learning models. The reason of not using supervised learning is simple. The time spent labeling each data set could require even more time than analyzing for anomalies manually. So we do not, re out, uh, we do not rule out special techniques such as uh, active learning in the future to provide minimal expert knowledge in order to uh, boost the algorithm's performance. We also divide the algorithms into classical machine learning, which uh, generally faster, but uh, less robust versus neural networks that are uh, often trained better on large data sets, but cost are significantly higher. Additionally, they suffer from a critical downside. The neural networks are almost always not explainable and often require a lot of machine learning knowledge to tune in production environments, which is not what we want. Although there are many people wanting an all-in-one algorithm to solve the problems, unfortunately, the, they do not exist. One of the suitable methods is through a, a technique called ensemble learning to vote the best answer from a list of algorithms. They could also adjust themselves using a technique called AutoML with minimal manual interference. So next, we introduce our research decisions on analysis for metrics and logging data, which will be supported in the first phase of the Apache Sky working AI ops engine. Now we talk about metrics. Metrics could be the most straightforward and possibly easiest to collect and visualize among all pillars of observability. As we know by the name, metrics are time series data. Although single line of time series is quite easy to understand, to investigate a problem in production, it usually takes a deeper look at all correlating metrics within the time range. By that, we could introduce many more dimensions of the data. Uh, traditionally, we set the thresholds on metrics value given a heuristic that metrics go over certain values indicate a potential issue. But given seasonality and drifting in application code, the metrics are very likely to change in a short period of time. For example, you would set an upper bound for uh, the service load. How should an upper bound be decided? Since the traffic volume could drastically change throughout the time of the day, days in the week, even through a special holiday, you probably should set the upper bound high enough to prevent constant and recurrent alerts triggered by the alarm engine. Otherwise, you have to be very specific and it takes engine to support such fine granular uh, uh, Find granularity rules. On the other hand, of the on the right side of the slide, we see an example screenshot of the service response time percentile metric, which is a compound metric. So it is not possible to understand what exactly is going on during this time when the latency spikes. Will that be a CPU spike? And uh, is this surge expected? We don't know until we look through all the possibilities with the knowledge of the machines and all and your own business flow. What if we can understand the seasonality and detect outliers, even forecast the near future? Wouldn't that reduce a large chunk of the problem? Therefore, we set our goal as we need a way to learn trends and find our outliers from the data. To formally state the requirement, in data science, we often refer to the task of finding outliers and predicting the future as anomaly detection and forecasting. We define an anomaly as a series of time points that do not follow the current trend or deviate from seasonality and patterns. Anomaly detection works as a reactive approach. That is, we learn the more uh, normal patterns from the past history of metrics, and we actively uh, spot the, the data points. Well, on the other hand, we have several forecasting algorithms that basically ingest all the recent history and attempt to predict what the value points will be in the next uh, X minutes. Now, Apache Skywalking UI can already correlate across metrics by time 
but it still requires us to see and kind of compare through a number of metrics in your dashboard. Well, with anomaly detection, we can further input the identified anomalies into a correlation matrix, where we can spot all the co-occurring anomalies in one single place. So additionally, uh, anomalies output by the algorithm can easily combine with the already existing static rule-based alert engines and serve as a regulator for each other to suppress false alarms. We can trigger alerts in a more valuable way. As another important data source of telemetry, uh, logs are probably the most time consuming to go through with since they are text-based and often not straightforward. Plus there's all, uh, when there's a degradation of the system, in many cases, the error logs will be overwhelming. Identifying the true root cause from a mountain of logs will be a painful job. We often see system logs as semi-structured text data, which means it is not like the daily language we speak. It is generated from a final set of log templates with dynamic parameters. The problem of manual log analysis is that the logs come in large quantity. While Scott working already provides correlation and uh, working log analysis language, it still requires DevOps engineers to know what to look for or provide a template for the log patterns when they are collected. Knowing that providing a precise regular expression to analyze the logs is not always possible and also error prone. We need an effective way to sort the logs into explorable ways. And most importantly, different from metrics that are usually mini-based and numerical, logs are of large size. Training a machine learning model for such kind of data will take extensive usage of a CPU and memory and memory resource in order to process all the text, right? To continue after identifying our requirements, we propose the approach of the template mining as a start point of the AIOps engine log analyzer. So template mining is kind of a clustering technique. By cluster, we refer to a data science term that means a group of logs within a service or pod that are very similar. Most likely they are just different in the parameters part. Think of uh, it as a reverse process of printing logs from your code. You always have a base and some variables to print into the log base. As you can see from the screenshot on the right, template mining can extract the parameters and replace them with a set of special symbols. Whenever a new log matches this pattern, it will be stored into the bucket. This kind of analyzer will allow two direct usages. First, you can just find useful logs quickly and precisely even from many millions of logs by compressing them into probably fewer than a hundred log templates. So on, uh, the second one is that by sorting the occurrences, you can identify the unseen logs that are not expected by simply viewing the counters. What is implicit is that template mining can always serve as an input to a true anomaly detection layer. As we just mentioned in the metrics anomaly detection problem, we can easily extract metrics from logs in this way because we already know the position of parameters and values and turn the problems into a time series anomaly detection problem. On the other hand, we could have a counter that aggregates the size of each log template across time. What do I mean by this? Let's go to the next slide where I showcase a simple prototype. What we have here is a very rough plot of how user interacts with a log viewer, which has template mining enabled. By maintaining a counter for the number of log templates each minute, we can aggregate the logs in time and plot the trends of uh, occurrences directly into the user interface. Though it does not hint problems in the order of uh, log occurrences, it elegantly, uh, elegantly shows you if there are weird increases or decreases in log number over a period of time. Now, I know that we're not doing a machine learning research workshop, so I will not get into very details of uh, how the selected the algorithms work. Uh, in fact, you can find all of them well documented by their corresponding research studies. But I want to give some gentle introductions to the two algorithms to, of our selection. 
one for metric and uh, one for logs. I want to point out that production usage will be based on heavy modifications and even combining different algorithms together in order to achieve good performance. We only introduce the basics here. The first algorithm is known as a robust random cut forest or RRCF. It is originally invented by Amazon data scientists and adopted as an anomaly detection service in AWS. It fits our requirements of efficiency and robustness because it is unsupervised, well explained, and uh, it, all, it allows incremental adapting tree states to online data. So as all other tree-based machine learning models are, it has the advantage of rapid traversal and learning. Without going too far on explaining how isolation forests work, let's take a quick look at the figure on the right side. A robust random cut forest randomly draws samples from a group of data points from the metric stream, will result in many trees like the left side one that contains different data. In order to detect for a new point X, we simply insert it into the trees and calculate a score representing the change of complexity in that tree. We finally average the results among all the trees to generate an anomaly score as the output of the algorithm. So the algorithm bases on an understanding of the anomalies where if a new data point increases uh, overall model complexity significantly, it is considered as an anomaly. So we next talk about our choice of log analysis. The log algorithm is known as the drain approach. Uh, similar to the metrics algorithm, it is another unsupervised learning technique with incremental learning capability. Please take a look at the right side. At the root, we maintain a fixed depth tree structure as the main state of the algorithm. Upon this, the new log received from the data stream, what uh, traditionally done is using a dedicated regular expression to match the metadata, like timestamps, level path, while most importantly, identifying parameters in the actual message part so the patterns can be seen. The parameters can be values, long list, even words that looks like constants within a template. Uh, what is magical about this method is that we don't go through any of these complicated with regular expression matching. Raw logs are all we need. Pre-processing is out of the box as long as your application logs are well formed by uh, applying a common sense of development. Uh, Pre-processing simply removes some commonly known strings like timestamp IP addresses, and uh, so on. After that, the lo raw log with minor modification is directly passed into the tree. So take a, uh, take a look at the tree figure on the right side. Whenever there's a match of condition, including uh, the total length, the first token in the log, and finally calculating the similarity between each token, the log traverses a fixed depth until it reaches a uh, leaf node. And we have a result either uh, meaning creating, updating, or classifying the log into a log template, as we seen in the last slide. Obviously, simply adopting the basic algorithm is far from enough. To optimize our goals, we identified few problems in the original drain approach and uh, from an open source implementation from IBM. We realized that similarity equation could be op optimized in order to account for scenarios that raw logs are ingested. Instead of having some prior knowledge on dividing the logs header with the actual message. By doing this, we significantly increased the accuracy of the template mining, but introduced a bit more overhead in computation because we have to deal uh, more with the pre-processing. To deal with it, we introduced additional cache layers to hold recent log templates data, given the observation that many logs tend to repeat quite frequently. We keep a reasonable number of templates within memory to eliminate most of the tree traversal time. And most importantly, we realized that pre-processing steps can easily be distributed among several workers as they are very standalone. This further steps up, uh, speeds up the calculation and prepares the algorithm for production environments. With inspirations from the second paper of the original authors, 
we are investigating to adopt, uh, adopt their idea on automatic similarity calculation given each log template group. This will eliminate the need for adjusting parameters for some very corner cases. With AI ops as an intelligent assistant, we cannot assume it to be always correct. And we often will want to take over the last step of deciding whether the algorithms are correct. Therefore, a visualization is critical. In my opinion, prediction sending or sending unexplained alerts to users without showing is just undesirable and non-responsible. Uh, with the convenience of being a part of Skywalking ecosystem, we plan to have extra visualizations directly baked into the out-of-the-box of front-end dashboards. What we will visualize are exactly what we discussed in the capabilities of the algorithms that we will plot and highlight the forecasted values and potential anomalous periods along with the original metrics. Upon request, you will be able to correlate multiple metrics under the same scope to quickly understand uh, what went wrong. We believe that the most practical goal is to augment human analysis. We would focus on suppressing false alarms and respect the original manual rules set by the users. Okay, finally, let's take a look at what we can expect in our current plans. Take a look at the left. The AIOps engine will not serve as an external component in an Apache Skywalking deployment, as they are designed to be general purpose for any observability platforms. Uh, AIOps engine communicates uh, with and receives telemetry from Skywalking backend over the network, receiving but only store data for a short period of time before they are processed by the system uh, stream workers. Visualizations and uh, options to invoke machine learning jobs will be directly wrote, uh, written into a future version of Skywalking Booster UI available from version I. The AI Ops engine will require no machine, le machine learning knowledge and will provide a near real-time analysis of both metrics and logs with the functionalities we described earlier in this talk. The current project is collaborated with Apache Skywalking contributors and also support from OSPP and GSOC students who has extensive knowledge in the machine learning area. Uh, through stage one to four, we have evaluated the algorithms and started the engine implementation. Well, by the end of stage two, we will start integration and visualization work with the Skywalking backend and propose some concrete UI side changes. Till then, we will be confident to invite early users to test out the functionalities. In this talk, we have covered a range of most practical yet simple ways to achieve AI ops functionalities, including anomaly detection, forecasting, and clustering for metrics and log data. We know that there is a lot more to AI ops to discover that relies on these basic capabilities. As we have discovered in the log analysis part, analyzing log-based metrics using anomaly detection algorithm will be a good start to further advance the user experience. On the other hand, as a full stack APM solution, Apache Skywalking has the advantage of housing multiple pillars of telemetry data and already, already correlates them in-house. It is a huge opportunity for us to explore root cause analysis given traces, logs, metrics, and events data. To be able to achieve this, we welcome more contributors from both engineering and data science field. We also appreciate users to test our the, uh, test the AI ops functionalities once they are ready. To summarize my talk today, we talked about what is AI ops and why should we care using it to reduce tedious manual work and optimize the bottlenecks. We further talked a lot about adoption challenges on AI ops, why we should not fully rely on them. We depicted the most pressing problem is that a current state of lacking integrations with mature open source monitoring platforms. We then moved to discuss our take on AI ops. Specifically, we uh, focused on metrics and log analysis with a gentle introduction to two of the many algorithms that we evaluated and optimized for the engine to utilize. We finally talked about the plans to make it happen as a out of the box solution to Apache Skywalking ecosystem. One more thing before we go. 
let's review the timeline of the work. We can expect the very first release and an early integration with Apache Skyworking version 9 in late 2022. After that, we will certainly have a lot more exciting features and algorithms to come. Please find our project currently residing and incubating at Sky APM, the Apache Skywalking Ecosystem Organization.